Good morning, Cal Allen High School. Wake up and welcome to your biology EOC review. The first thing we're going to talk about is the characteristics of all living organisms. All living organisms must contain one or more cells. They must be able to exchange gases, respond to stimuli, metabolize and grow, and reproduce. Viruses are not considered living because they are not made of one or more cells and they are not able to reproduce on their own. The four biomolecules that make up all living things are one, carbohydrates, made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, CHO, and their monomer is saccharides or sugars. The structure, you can see a carbon ring and they give you quick energy. Lipids, also made of CHO, their monomer is fatty acids and glycerol, and they have a carbon chain. Third are proteins, which is made up of CHON. You can remember that because of the N in CHON and the N in proteins. And the monomer is amino acids. Remember there are picky proteins, known as enzymes, that bind to substrates to lower activation energy in chemical reactions. And the fourth biomolecule or macromolecule is known as nucleic acids, which is made up of all five essential elements, CHOPIN. Their monomer is nucleotides, and the two best examples of nucleic acids are DNA and RNA. There are two types of cells that make up living organisms, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The way to remember prokaryotes is that pro rhymes with no, therefore they have no nucleus or no membrane-bound organelles. The kingdoms that make up prokaryotes are archaea bacteria and eubacteria. The other type of cell is a eukaryote. Remember, euk means nuke, therefore they have a nucleus. The kingdoms that make up eukaryotes are protista, fungi, plants, and animals. Both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have genetic material. The cell cycle, also known as cellular division or cellular reproduction, is made up of six steps. I, P, M, A, T, C. Interphase, which is composed of G1, S, and G2, is the longest phase and where the cell spends most of the time. Don't forget, DNA is replicated in the S or synthesis phase of interphase. Next would be mitosis, when the cell is actually dividing, and this is PMAT, P for pro, P for pair up, M for meta, M for middle, A for ana, A for away, T for tello, and T for two. And then finally, cytokinesis completes the cut. Don't forget that any disruption in the cell cycle that causes unregulated cellular division is known as cancer and will cause tumors. There are two types of cell division. The first one, mitosis, happens in mitoses, or somatic body cells. Mitosis makes my twin cysts, or two identical cells that have 46 chromosomes in each cell. The second type, meiosis, happens in meios. It makes the me and gametes, or reproductive cells. In meiosis, four genetically different haploid cells are produced that have half the number of chromosomes of the original cell. DNA, fantastic, deoxyribonucleic acid. Here we're talking about DNA, which has a double helix shape. The nitrogenous bases that always pair together are A with T, the apples in the tree, and the cars in the garage, C with G. Remember, the deoxyribose sugar and phosphate groups bond together down the sides for the backbone of DNA. And it's the sequence of the nitrogenous bases that determines the proteins created and makes us unique. Remember, during DNA replication, changes can occur in the nitrogen bases of DNA. These changes are called mutations. Mutations can be good, bad, or neutral. A good mutation is going to increase the organism's chance of survival leading to evolution. A bad mutation would cause a genetic disorder in the organism, and a neutral mutation would not affect the organism. DNA is the blueprint of life and carries the genetic code that codes for all of our traits. These traits are then expressed by proteins that are made via protein synthesis. When DNA is turned into mRNA, this is called transcription and happens in the nucleus. When the mRNA 
is translated into amino acids at the ribosome, this is called translation. Remember to tell the difference between DNA and RNA. If I could choose between DNA and RNA, I'd choose RNA because it has U in it. In genetics, there are some key vocabulary terms that you need to remember. The first one, homozygous genotype, is when you have two alleles that are the same, such as capital A, capital A, or lowercase a, lowercase a. If you have a heterozygous genotype, then your alleles are going to be different, capital A, lowercase a. The only way that a recessive trait will show is if you have two recessive alleles, or it is homozygous recessive, such as little a, little a. When you get to your Punnett square questions, make sure you work them out. First write the parent genotypes out and then solve the problem. If you get a monohybrid cross, then you'll be crossing one trait only and it will have four boxes. If you get a dihybrid cross, you'll be crossing two traits and you'll need to use the foil or box method to work it out. Remember, dihybrid crosses are going to have 16 boxes, so take your time and do your best. Evolution is the change in organisms over time. This is caused by natural selection, which is survival of the fittest. The most fit with the best adaptations or traits will survive and then reproduce. Remember, populations evolve, not individuals. The evidence for evolution or common ancestry can be found in one of five ways. Through DNA similarities, which is the molecular or biochemistry evidence, structural similarities, which is anatomical evidence, through embryology or embryos, the developmental evidence, from the fossil record, which shows the progression of organisms from ancient times to the most recent, and then the geographic distribution of organisms, which refers to biogeography. Classification is a system that scientists around the world have come up with to name and group organisms based on similarities. When we look at the levels of classification, we have eight levels. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. As you move down these levels, it gets more specific. A couple of mnemonic devices we have for remembering these levels of classification is did King Philip come over for great spaghetti or grape soda? And we also have dumb kids playing catch on freeways get squashed. Remember, the genus and the species are used in naming an organism. There are two types of ecological succession, which is the building or rebuilding of a community over time. Primary succession. P for primary, P for pioneer species, or pre-soil. This type of succession will always start out on bare rock, which will need to be broken down by your pioneer species of lichens and mosses. Secondary succession. S for secondary, S for soil. This always occurs after some type of natural disaster and will always start with a layer of soil. Both types of succession, however, will increase biodiversity over time. Your symbiotic relationships, there are three important relationships to remember. Commensalism, one species benefits while the other remains unaffected. Mutualism, both species are benefiting. And parasitism, one species benefits while harming the other. As you're taking your test, make sure you use your test taking strategies that we've been working on in class. The first thing you should do is read the entire question before looking at all answer choices. If you have to, reread the question. Next, you should highlight or underline any important information. You should also use your scratch paper to write out what you know that may help you answer the question. After that, see if you can eliminate at least two choices that are wrong and make sure you justify why they are wrong. The last thing is don't second guess yourself. Your first choice is usually the best choice. Remember, take your time. This is not a race. You have four hours, so focus on doing your best. Take a deep breath. Believe in yourself. You know the material. Beat the test. Hashtag winning. 
We believe in you.